Good evening. When they write stories about the careers of John Higgins and Mark Williams, Chapter 1 will start in 1992, the year they both turned pro at the age of 17. It was the year that John Major was in Downing Street, Bill Clinton was in the White House, and Wright said Fred were at number one with Deeply Dippy. Well, happily, some memories fade, but the Scot and the Welshman are not fading away. And these 40-somethings have given us a nostalgia fest in the oldest ever lineup in the final of the Betfred World Championship. What a reception these two great champions have had here. That's not a bad start from the Welsh potting machine. Big Mark Williams special to clinch this opening frame. Most people can be afraid of winning. Great champions are afraid of losing. Excellent shot. He's in the pocket. The good start continues for Mark Williams. Two frames to nil. This is a long game this morning. Oh, great shot. Great shot again. He leads John Higgins by three frames to nil. No, best player in the world with the rest is John. Big, big shot now. Nil. It's not his favourite implement, there's no question about it. In goes the pink, and he leads the final, four frames to nil. Ah, good shot. That's a fabulous century from John Higgins. Yes, the path that you have travelled matters not. It's only the path that you're on. And what about this for a positional shot? What a way to respond. Five frames to one. Just starting to come alive now, this final, as we knew it would. Has he got it? Of course he has. And he closes the gap, trailing five frames to two. This is risky. Oh, well done. Great shot. Mark Williams led 4-0, so John Higgins, he'll be pleased. He's 5-3 behind, though. This week or not, maybe a few times. Anyway, the boys are ready. This is the most important one now, 2018, and we see a little question mark there as well. But the boys, normally it's very nervous. I can't believe how relaxed it is. It's like going out for a bit of practice. Are you ready? Are you ready? Are you ready? <laughs> Are you ready? Are you ready, Kevin? <laughs> They're both ready. Let's get it on. Rob Walker, it's over to you. <laughs> Welcome to the second instalment of drama of this year's Betfred World Snooker Championship final. And what a monumental matchup this is turning out to be between two of the all time greats who've won 50 ranking titles between them. A very, very special night unfolding here, live at the Crucible. <laughs> Please welcome a player who has embarked on an incredible run this year in Sheffield. 12 months after failing to qualify and contemplating retirement, he's back in the final for the first time in 15 years. And what a start this afternoon, showing all that class over the last two decades. Ladies and gentlemen, he will be fired up tonight in his own inimitable style. Here comes the pride of Wales, Mark Williams. <laughs> And his 
opponent, a player who has also been producing his best here for two decades. From 4-0 down this afternoon, he showed all the class that has taken him to four world titles so far. He will dig deep tonight, as he always does. He's the pride of Scotland. He's the Wizard of Wishaw, John Higgins. <laughs> This afternoon's first session had everything, a lightning fast, confectionery fueled start from Mark Williams and a resolute recovery after a big shock to John Higgins' system. What will we get to? Parrot and John Virgo. Good evening, gents. Good evening, Hazel. Good evening, everybody. And the two players shake hands. Thank you, Thank you ladies and gentlemen. Frame nine. Mark Williams to break. And I think if that old phrase, John, form is temporary, class is permanent, then this is the answer to it, this final. Nothing more true, John, than that. Two wonderful players who have got themselves to another world final. Incredible. <coughs> but then again, when you see what attributes they have, maybe not that incredible. Wonderful match players, great temperaments. I mean, can anybody more laid back than Mark Williams coming into a major final? Incredible. Yeah, he's a one-off, is Mark. Long pot success. Well, John Higgins at 50%. Oh, yeah. And didn't see the value in taking that red on because he wasn't certain to be on a colour and it was risky. So just probably thinking I'll just play my way in this evening because it must have been a shock to the system to be 4-0 behind and 5-1. Yeah, he didn't really get out the blocks, did he, opening session? I don't suppose it was being tired or anything. It was just a, one of those sessions. He just maybe a little bit nervous and didn't really get going. Oh. Oh. Well, he's got to the double. Clever shot, as you'll see with Mark Williams, but this is a tricky black. Oh. Mm, just a bit high. Mark Williams won. To say, tricky black. But once he'd got the double, was forced into it, really. Close. I think John thought it was in for a second. I tell you what, that's a big shot in the frame as well, John, because if that goes in, and you see it just catching the near jaw, purposely left it on the black where he pot it and go straight into the pack, so that was a huge shot. <laughs> I didn't think that was on, to be honest with you. One. He may have ended up snookered on both, pink and black. If he's landed in the one spot there, well, he can swerve this to Potter. And he's just looking to see if he, if he swerves it with a little bit of side, will it come off the cushion and it can go between the pink for the red. And there's Manchester United footballer Michael Carrick, John, somebody who, uh, you'll know very well being a fan. Yeah, absolutely. One of Manchester United's all-time greats, there's no doubt about that. And uh, he's retired, Eight. but he's going to be on the coaching staff. And talking about Manchester United, all our thoughts go out to Sir Alex. Hope he's on the way to recovery.
Mark Williams, eight. That was an excellent pop from Mark in the middle there that he chipped in. But you couldn't believe where he finished. Just needed anything really on the black. It was a brilliant chance, as I say, with it being over the corner, he could have played the shot to go straight into the pack and open them up. That's John's luck. He's got a clear run to the reds just below the pink. Needs a good cue ball, though. A couple of reds may be possible. Ooh, he's caught this much too thin. That's a miss hit. Hmm. He may have been fortunate as well because he's left Mark horrible cue in here. Gotta be very careful when you follow through, the cue doesn't touch the red. Yeah, there was a lot in that shot to think about. Not only was it extremely difficult with queuing across the table, he had to keep his eye on the fact that when he followed through, there wasn't any contact with the red he was closest to, so it was a big shot. Yeah, and he had to play it that way. If he'd have played it with pace, he'd have probably kissed the red near the top cushion and been on nothing, but it's a, a reprieve for John. And how many times do we see it? You play a bad oh. shot, you think it's going to cost you. Next thing, it's cost you nothing, and you're back at the table with a good chance. Six. <coughs> Seven. Well, off the jaw. I think he may have missed that at one point. Yeah, it was a type of shot coming off that left hand jaw as we look. He, he could have lost the cue ball, but he's okay, nicely on the black. Just screwing back a fraction to leave room for the black to go back on its spot. 40. There's no doubt, John, that John Higgins has shortened up his cue action slightly. He came in the studio the other day and said he'd seen something on one of the BBC coverage programmes that when he was playing, his cue action was a little bit on the long side, even for him. So he's shortened it up a touch. A bit more compact, a bit more control. And he certainly started to score when he did it. That's OK, he's got a red to the right middle. 22. Always amazes me with John Higgins, and Stephen Hendry brought it with the day, how far the tip of the cue is from the cue ball when he addresses it. Most players are almost touching the white. <coughs> Well, one eye on the cannon. John Higgins, 22. One eye on the cannon, took his eye off the pot. But what has he left? First glance, nothing. you need as a snooker player and patience is certainly one of them Mark Williams has just well, could have hoped for a better opportunity there and also when John <coughs> miss hit the safety shot and left him pretty awkward mm, this is a wonderful arena and the setting well, we've been here now 41 years and it just never fails to bring out a bit of emotion he's taking this red on Feels the only one he can leave is the one he's playing. Great pops. <laughs> Wonderful shots. 
one. Yeah, can't cue one better than this. And of course, where he's finished on the back is absolutely perfect for a little stun up. Right at the back of the cluster, definitely goes. So, from nothing, he's created a chance. That was an excellent opening red. Eight. When he pots this red, he'll release another one to the opposite corner. Purposely leaving himself Nine. low on the black. He's got an angle to go into them. But if he just played a cannon on the loose red that's to the left of him, he'd, he'd have a red to the opposite corner to the black. Depends how he feels, whether he feels as though he can guarantee the cannon on the loose red. about John probably 60. a little bit tight wasn't it so he decided I'll take the cannon and take my chances played it well yeah it's worked out okay the only downside you would say is a little bit closer to the cushion than he'd like to be but that was a Seven. good shot and he's got a nice angle on the black. You feel just one good positional shot here and the 30 points he needs to get to Snooker's required stage will be there. But it's just one more good positional shot. Mm, and he hasn't played it. 24. I think he was trying to stun up the other side of the reds there. Just got into the cue ball a bit much. Trying to play for the red in the opposite corner, but got into the white a little bit too effectively. And now it's just a safety. So he's got a 40, he's got, well, I should say 35 point lead, but he's had three chances already in the frame. Not really put it to bed yet, which should be a little bit worrying. Yeah, he doesn't want to overcomplicate this third shot. Well, it looks like he's going to play safe into the top cushion and just put a red safe and the black safe or John in Higgins a safeish position. So I was thinking that's to put the disappointment of the poor positional shot behind him, but this frame's still well and truly on. Yeah, he sacrificed there. More or less would have known he could be in trouble. And Mark Williams hasn't quite got enough on the cue ball, but there was a chance there that he could have been right behind the brown. John still thought it was worth playing to try and get the black safe. Taking this on. Oh no, he wasn't. You fool me, but uh, now he's played it as he has. He maybe wish he had it done because he's definitely left the red to the left centre. Containing safety, but it's not worked out. There's a brilliant pass in the middle pocket. One. And the only downside is if he's come straight, this was wonderful queuing from Mark Williams. Not a lot to look at there in those middles, John. Yeah, and I suppose we can see the value of John Higgins. If the black had been on his spot here, we could be saying that this is a great chance to steal, but as you say, a bit too straight on the black. Trying to force the cue ball out. Well, he's done very well. Needed a bit more side, but I don't think he Eight. wanted to risk playing with too much side. So, another good pot needed. Excellent. And this is a really dangerous table now for John Higgins. 
Yes, I know there's lots of pressure on it, and we see these players are that good. We think they're going to clear up every time, but this is a a very dangerous board for them at the minute. The Reds are all in the open, with the exception of those two, which will easily come out with a cannon somewhere along the line. So this is a very 40. good chance for Mark Williams, and an extremely important one, John. Yeah, absolutely. As you say, John Higgins has already had three chances, but it, it will a lot depend on this shot. He's looked to play a cannon on the red just to the left of the pink to hold, but he needs to catch it full in the face. Just about there is perfect. What an absolutely wonderful touch he's got. Nice. I mean, if that shot goes wrong, it's end of break. He's hit it plumb. As I say, once he gets 20. this black, the next red, the black is perfect for a stun up into the two stuck together. Although he wasn't expecting that big bounce off the cushion. Yeah, he seems to get a big bounce off the other side cushion as well. So whether he's just maybe pushing the cues through a little bit firmer. Because obviously there's tension out there. 28. Mm. He could have done with being a little bit straighter, so Cannon on the two reds, trying to bring them into play. Oh, once again, played it beautifully. We have a new favourite for the frame now. 35. Yeah, lovely touch. 36. Perfect world, you'd get the green back up on its spot, make yeah. it easier. And I think that's what he played for, John, and he's just under-hit it. <coughs> We've been able to control the cue ball nicely. Now two points ahead. 39. Hmm. Could have done a tiny bit more on the cue ball there. He's got a little bit too much of an angle. Don't think he can drop the blue in without getting the cannon on the yellow. It's very close. He just plays the drop in. If he can, that's what he'll play. Yeah, because it looks like the yellow will pass the, the brown into the far right corner. It's all about line and length. Good line. Perfect length. 45. He's taken these well, hasn't he? 47. This is absolutely vintage, Mark Williams. This is what he's always been exceptional at, John, when he was winning tournaments. Yeah, and he's just, he'll be a little bit disappointed there. He let that cue ball run through a couple of inches. John Higgins will be there wondering about the chance he's missed. Mark Williams needs green, brown and blue to take the first frame of this second session. But he's OK Fifth. now. Yeah, and even that was a better shot than it looked when you got that extension on the NDQ with the extra weight. Very easy to get into that cue ball too much and screw back. But he played it beautifully. Fifty-four. This blue to go twenty-two points in front, with just thirteen remaining. <laughs> Excellent shooting from Mark Williams. John Higgins had three chances, and you might say had a run of the ball. First chance Mark Williams has got, he's won the frame. Sixty-five. And looks in marvellous touch. Good start for Mark Williams. He won't be worried whether the cue ball goes in the middle or not. 72 and a friend. The family are happy. John Higgins needs to pick up his game. Three chances and not taken. Mark Williams now extends his lead to three. Six frames to three.
exactly. And the foundation of it was that pot to the middle. Yeah, he must be one of the best middle pocket potters that we have uh, ever had in the game. And have a look at this. It's not only such a tough shot into the middle and uh, such an acute angle, uh, but perfectly on the black and played a really good break there. Not only the black to red state, but then mm. a, a couple of beautiful little cannons. I mean, his cue ball wouldn't be on a string like John Higgins's would, mm. but what he does, he has a wonderful touch, as John Parrott said, and just to keep that break going, it was a magnificent break. He, he's very effective without looking effective. Yeah, yeah. Yes. And, um, and actually, one thing that's, uh, that John Parrott was mentioning this afternoon when he was doing some demonstrations was that John Higgins has spotted that he felt he was pu pulling his cue back too far for the shot, for the weight of mm. delivery of the shot. But it's something else spotted with Mark Williams. I think Mark Williams is pulling the cue back short to distance than he had to a few years ago. So he's very compact uh, and he's hitting through the ball positively because he's not pulling the cue back too far. Mm. And when he hits it, he's punching it rather than stroking it. Yeah. And on a short, on, a, on fast tables, you don't have to have that long a pullback. And he, he's stolen a frame from John Higgins there, who will be not happy that he's given away guilt edged chances, mm. three, three chances, as we said. Exactly, three chances not converted by John Higgins. Yeah. Very, very yeah. solid. Yeah, you could see that. him. He was steaming in his chair there as John Mark Higgins Williams was clearing up. That was a chance miss for John Higgins. Just a reminder, there's going to be nine frames played in this session. And John Higgins goes back to his seat with a wry smile on his face. That's not a good break-off shot. Just not found his touch yet. Yeah, I love this shot on the break, John. This one, absolutely perfect. I hit that red full ball. It was end the break if you missed that. Beautiful little shot. Took the harder shot, or the harder pot, if you like. But can John Higgins get past the blue? The way he's looking, I think he can. He's coming down to see the availability. Well, can he? On our virtual look, he seems as though he can't. He's having to play a little bit of swerve. This is missable. Well, that was missable. He'd be relieved to see the cue ball nestling into the cluster. Yeah, you had to play that slower than that, didn't you? Once you hit it that hard, the swerve wasn't going to come back. See, the cue ball goes out. Not enough time for it to swerve back in. I'm very fortunate to stick in the side of the pack. Decent cue ball. Now this will be a test for John because a couple of safety shots he played in the first frame of this session, he caught them much too thin, didn't really hit them. Played a break off shot, didn't really hit that well. Needs to be finding that ball cushion, particularly against the potter of Mark Williams' quality. So there's pressure on this. That's why, once again, he played the containing, but he's not hit it right at all. OK, he probably left a red that Mark won't be tempted with, but that's certainly not like he played it. Hmm. Well, this is brave. This is a horrible shot. Cut back in the corner. No idea where the cue ball's going. And you need to cue it well off the cushion. Question that shot selection, John, because as you said, particularly under the cushion, it's hard to generate the pace, even if the red had gone in. Look where the cue ball finished. Do 
can't get to the one that's just away from the pocket. I'm going to play this one near the top cushion. Hoping to go for the blue, probably. Or pink. And in it went. I was about to say, John, it was right well, touching the cushion, that. It needed, it needed putting. It looked, it looked easy at first glance, but it was very close to the cushion, that. And it just about wobbled in. Sounds ridiculous that you could miss one of those, somebody of John's capabilities, but they can be missed. Just feel as if he needs to make a frame-winning contribution with one of these chances just to settle down this evening. As we mentioned, he had two or three chances in the, the opening Six. frame. Didn't take them. Just needs to get his scoring boots on. Seven. Mind you, I'm saying that, John, in one of the sessions with Kyron Wilson in the eight frames, his highest break was 37, if you can believe that. But he came out 40. of the session 4-4 with him. So it just shows you the quality of his match play. 15. That's what his B game's like when it's not all firing. Yeah, but I think those type of frames against a young player like Kyron, you'd always fancy John in the tactical side. But Mark Williams can match him in that. And I agree with you, this is a, a big visit. 20. Just to settle him down. Twenty-three. The two reds adjacent to the left corner pocket, I think. Well, at least one goes, so he could stand up for one of those here. Which he's done it now. I assume the right hand one goes as well. 30. Yeah, this is a really quite a nice chance because he's got obviously two or three loose reds, but he's also got a lovely cluster, 31. the three next to the pink. If he gets on the blue at one point, or indeed off the pink, he can split those up. He's having a look at the pink now, but it's one of those that will be after, absolutely lovely coming in there off the blue. So he's taking it this way with the pink, slightly stretching. And there we go, flicks the three reds out into open play. Even better chance. 37. What he said. <laughs> Thanks. Thirty. No, sort of an angle as he got on this black. He doesn't have to play any more cannons. Situations you wouldn't mind him being straight, but he's just off straight. Got to cue this nice. Well, he's got a little bit twixt in between. <coughs> 45. He's looking for another 25 points at this visit to get to snooker's required. Taking the slightly trickier red and the Left hand middle. Forty six. Really generate any pace. It was such a tricky pot that. So he's slightly wrong on the blue. Is the cue ball going to pull up? Mm. Well, applause, but. It's a bit further 51. down the table than he wanted. He may still have a pot on, but it's not as easy as he was looking for. It's 
Still looking for three more reds. No, it was tricky, that. John Higgins, 51. Yeah, it's not an easy shot, that, on a screw down and up the table off it. Shot before was the one that was the costly one. And a big area, really, off the blue for John to play into. Well, that was, once again, when you play it with that page, you've got to be so accurate. And as soon as John walked to the table here, something was interesting him. Three ball plant. And do you know, John, it looks on. It looks absolutely plumb, John, doesn't it? It does. <coughs> when these second two reds are very close together, you've got to hit the first one bang in the middle. But at first glance, and looking again, looks unmissable. Well, I'd be amazed if he doesn't take it. Well, maybe... Well, they say the camera never lies, but... The only thing I can think of is the second red in the line of three is just on the other one, touching the other one. Maybe he thinks that's the problem. Yeah, maybe. Well, Mark's having a look at it. And I think Mark would be of the opinion that it could be, so he won't be leaving John a chance of possibly playing the plant from the balk end. OK, then. That plant's still there, then. I mean, in that virtual thing, I mean, it, it looks on, but... You know better when you get down behind a shot, obviously. No, just nestling into them. Yeah, they're just touching the other oh. red, John. And that one didn't nice. touch your red either. No. Mark Williams, four. Yeah, they're just... <laughs> He's not asking the referee to replace it, is he? Referee Brendan Moore would be pleased that you said from there, Mark. He won't want to be replacing that. I suppose that's the problem with John with this type of shot because your cue's so far away from the cue ball. It's this delicate shot's difficult. That's a good point, John. It is very unusual. I can't think of any other player in the professional ranks who cues up like that. I have to be honest with you. Well, that's opened the reds up. Mark Williams hoping to get the next chance. You feel if John Higgins gets it, he'll be frame over. And the possibility of cutting this red to the right middle. Well, no, just decided to knock it safe, so he's putting a few insurance uh, balls to the cushions. Didn't want to take any undue risks. He's trying to protect that 47-point lead. Tried it in the last frame. Didn't work. that's in the book area that John's ignoring. It's going to play some part in the shot because if John Higgins thinks he's found a shot to nothing somewhere or 
He's having a look now. I wonder what shot he's come up with there. Yeah, there's that red that's just up into the right of the black. The only problem is you've got to be careful he doesn't run into the red near the left-hand side cushion. Well, he's avoided that, but by playing it that way, well, he's left the red he played. Mm. Not striking the ball well so far this evening. Well, it's also a bit strange, John, isn't it? Because he's, he's played the shot before to put a red on the cushion to try and keep it as tight as possible and then follows it with that shot. It's not like John at all, that one. Well. Anyway, it's gone. Live by your decisions. If Mark Williams can, after potting his excellent red, can knock the blue in. Big chance, certainly, to get back in the frame. Absolutely. I think it's going to be a tall order to win it at this visit with the Reds near the side cushion. Six. Seven. Fourteen. Fifteen. Right, he's hitting the ball this evening, Mark Williams. It really is just like him at his best. Floats around the snooker table like nobody else. 22. Economy of effort with the cue ball. Doesn't hit anything hard. Except for that one he missed. Now, oh, was that a kick? Mark Williams, 22. Mm. Well, I didn't expect him to miss it, to be honest with you. Let's have a look. Well, there's a bit of a jump, but when you're playing that top spin, you get the balls jumping. We'll see it a lot when we get this super slow-mo watching. And it's amazing how often the, the cue ball leaves the bed of the table. But it looks as though he's had a little bit of a reprieve by covering that red with the black. <laughs> John Higgins now just trying to cover the red in the ball can or leave the cue bell ball parallel with it so you can't play a good safety off it. <laughs> this was the shot before. Yeah, you see the where the cue ball stopped. On impact. Yeah, played that well. Just a clever little shot from Mark there, just chipped the red cue ball opposite so he couldn't see it, the one in the bulk area. John may be forced into a pot here. He was, and he needs a bit of luck. blocking the the pocket for the pot so John was a little bit fortunate the significance of this session this evening nine frames somebody's going to win it stands to reason nine frames an odd number Mark Williams already holding a two-frame advantage when we come into this evening. You just feel that John Higgins' goal was to try and win this. 
this evening's session, but so far, Mark Williams looks to the, the steadier of the two. I said in the last frame that it was ripe for a clearance. This one definitely isn't. And John Higgins won't be in a hurry to remove those reds. Okay, it's only a 25 point lead, but the way the balls are, that's quite a big lead. will most definitely be the longest frame of the match so far. 21 minutes in frame two is the longest frame they've played. So that'll be going past that in a minute. It was a half chance. Mark may consider this red worth taking on. The only red he could leave is the one he's playing. But both players at the moment got a touch of the nearlies. And every time a red's missed, he seems to go to a cushion. is a bit loose. Well, maybe the pink's just covering it. No luck from Mark. So just intent on getting this red away from the cushion. Possible double. Treble. Oh! Where did the cue ball nearly go? Nearly went in there, and he's angled on probably two reds, John. He may have to be forced into the three reds on the left-hand side, so that cue ball finishing where it has done, stuck on that jaw, is making him play this shot. Well, God, as what Dennis Taylor said, the dreaded double kiss, but that's uh, a good double kiss. Slowly but surely, though, the balls are coming out into open play. Just a two now over on the left-hand side. So Mark Williams showing all the patience. He was quite happy before just to chip the balls on the cushion himself, despite being behind. Just as I say that, another one runs up the cushion. Yeah, but once again, it was a half chance from John Higgins that... He didn't really get close to. He's in trouble here, Mark. This is what he's got. Can't see those two reds there. He can only play the ones down the left-hand side. Not easy to get to back to the bulk area. Unless you play it with a loaded check side and hit it that well. Wonderful shot. As you say, John, that was difficult. And a little tap on the table from John Higgins.
Just coming up to 24 minutes and can't see an end in sight. Uh, John's going to play this and he doesn't like it because he's going to hit it thick. He's got to hit it thick to have a go at the pot and to avoid the red on the right hand side. The two reds that are to the right of the black, he's got to avoid the right hand side one. Brilliant. Oh. Oh. Fabulous. Oh, pot. Full. Yeah, and of course he always knew the cue ball was going close to the opposite corner. The upside for John, he's got another red off the table, even though it's cost him four points. Saw the scoreboard there. Mark Williams has got to get the next chance, you feel. If John Higgins gets it, he'll win the frame. Some good stuff at the minute. Mark's trying to get the balls into play and trap John. John's having none of it. He certainly won't be moving the two reds on the left-hand side cushion, that's for sure. Three reds on the left-hand side cushion. It's an excellent reply from Mark Williams. Really good tactical stuff from two masters. Yes, he can clearly get through to the reds on the left, but he's swerving around the yellow to hit this red. Don't want to bring one of those reds away from the cushion. Control swerve. <coughs> but he'll have left this on. But look at the table. You can't fancy Mark Williams winning the frame at this visit. What a brilliant try that was. Played the red with pace, up off the top cushion, trying to come down and split the reds. And just got the bump. Very clever shot. Yeah, and if he hadn't just caught the bump, uh, I think he may have well brought two reds into play. As it is, the pot on the pink, too risky for no reward. Mark Williams won. Just at the moment, Mark's in control of this safety exchange. Twenty points ahead, John Higgins. Fifty-one remaining. Just wondering, he's trying to play a little bit of a shot to nothing. Red across the table, cross double type shot. Here it goes. Good effort, but look at the cue ball. Excellent. Yeah, it just signs in the last few safety shots that John Higgins starting to hit it a little bit better. Where's the cue ball going? <gasps> it's good now. take the chance of moving the reds away here Mark well he did and could play it so there's two back in play out of the three and the one that's on the left hand cushion for a left hander isn't terrible yes it's in an awkward position for potting but it's a lot better when you're left handed so if I'm looking totally unpromising in this frame if Mark Williams gets the next chance it is a chance 
I think if that red wasn't on the left-hand side cushion, John Higgins may be tempted to play the pot here, but if he missed it, he could knock that red away from the cushion. This is Pacey. In and out of Bork. So Mark Williams, he's going to get that half chance. But good pot needed. Well, there you go. All that tactical stuff, and then you feel Mark's got a half chance. Never take those reds for granted. Misses it. And John Higgins now. Two reds, two blacks to get to snookers required. Yep, one. Well, he'll be more than a little disappointed there, Mark Williams. He worked very, very hard to get that opportunity. Some tremendous tactical play. The balls were awkward. And he finally was presented with this chance. It wasn't easy, but he'll be kicking himself. He didn't take it there. Looked like he had absolutely no chance of winning that frame. No, half an hour of determined effort from Mark Williams, but if John Higgins can pot this red, another black, he'll Eight. go 36 points in front with just 35 remaining. Oh. It's in, and he's on the black. Yes, and I'd be concentrating like mad to get right behind this red. It's only one snooker at this level, and that isn't a great deal. So absolutely dead weight. 16. Drop it into the jaws of the pocket and let's see it disappear. Because what you don't want to do is give yourself 15 or 20 minutes of aggravation. Attempted snookers by an opponent, so it's in. Okay. 17. Yes, as you say, no heroics. I'll keep Mark Williams in his seat. Any chance of you turning that off, please? As the dreaded phone starts. 24. Anyway, fortunately, it didn't matter. The frame was over. And Mark Williams will stay in his seat. Oh, I'll get out of it just to go Higgins, to the. 24 uh, and the frame. For a for break, as does John Higgins, but John Higgins will be mighty relieved to get that frame on the board. So now he's still two behind, but he's starting to strike the ball better near the end of that frame. Steve, we were talking about this. You, you must convert your chances against Mark Williams. In essence, why? Uh, well, at any level, really, at a top-class professional level, the players are so good, even if they're 50, 60 points behind, they can clear up on you. So, therefore, when you get a good gilt edge chance at the start, you'd like to make a frame-winning contribution. And John Higgins hasn't done tonight. He's let, him, let the, sort of the balls go astray. Uh, first, first frame, Mark Williams converted that chance he got. He didn't get away with it a second time, so he didn't get it. So, you know, John Higgins would be much preferring to win, like, you know, 70s and 80s and winning in one visit. Exactly. because more his style. Yeah, well, exactly. And Mark Williams is a great hoover or opera of scrappy frames, <laughs> is he not? He certainly is, yeah. But I, I just love the, the cat and mouse games, you know, the tactics from both players, because they're both at the top of the game in that department as well. And uh, it's quite interesting. John can mix it with anybody, and Mark Williams can certainly mix it with anybody as well. Master Master, master tacticians. It's it's kind of degrees of greatness that we're playing for here, aren't we? Yeah. <laughs> in this final, I mean, they've they've been there, they've done it all, really. Um, it's it's Williams yeah. is after a fifth, and uh, Williams is after a third. I beg your pardon, and Higgins is after a fifth. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, they're both great champions. They can both play play with lots of uh, with, with pressure heaped upon them and still pot the balls. But they're great thieves. <laughs> of frames they shouldn't be winning and that's uh, it's quite fascinating to see how they go about that yep it's been a great final so far so back out we go we've got a long way to go this evening but this is the third of our evening that last one was just over half an hour so plenty to enjoy between now and well who knows when thank you frame 11 mark williams to break Frame 11 underway. And just looking back at those first two frames, John, I think Mark Williams was probably... I know he's won one of them. He may be a little bit disappointed he's not taken both of them. Yeah, he uh, certainly created a chance in the last frame from 
Well, a pretty forlorn position. As I say, the balls were horrendously awkward, weren't they, on the cushions, but he just showed tremendous patience and tactical acumen just to get himself a chance near the end. He didn't take it. It was a pot that he missed, but the stuff that he, he played to create that chance was fantastic. Yeah, the trademark long pot, we used to him knocking in. He didn't. And he'll be slightly kicking himself about not taking that chance. With that type of shot, you always err on the side of it, isn't it too thin? But catching the yellow has given John Higgins a tempter here, and he's good queuing. But the black is available into the opposite corner. And as I say, it just, I just felt at the end of that, with a couple of safety shots, that John was starting to strike the ball a bit better. Anyway, this is a tester. Played it in such a way that I thought the only ready could leave was the one he was playing, and he was right. Nearly got the double kiss, but safe enough. Not much Mark could do there. And the problem here is that red on the balk line. No real telling safety in the balk end at the moment. Oh, it's a pretty poor shot from John there. I don't quite know what he was doing there, but he's left Mark the possibility of a pot. Screw across the face of the pink for the black. Which he's potted, so... And he's played in a way that is absolutely outstanding. How many players have played it like that? That is wonderful. A very strange shot from John Higgins, the last one. Funny enough, Mark's played a few of those in the Championship, John, and nearly all of them have gone wrong. Yeah, it's sometimes Eight. very difficult, particularly when you're using a cushion to go into the red, to so generate enough pace. Just need a bit more topspin to get the arc on the cue ball. Yeah, far from an easy shot. It's just... Uh, Eight. He's either over-arced it or under-arced it. <laughs> Anyway, it was uh, not really a brilliant chance, even though the opening red was fantastic. You can't be a crucible, ooh, can you? <laughs> Got a good cue ball, though, did John? Yeah, I don't know about you, John, I used to hate these frames. Yeah, I don't think any player particularly likes them. Mainly because when the first chance comes, all the reds will be in the open. So whoever gets the first chance, well, you think is going to win it. And it's whoever's brave enough to go for a pot that might be left. I mean, the red on the right-hand side of the table, John Higgins would norm normally be tempted by the double, but he can't get the cue ball into a safe place. He's looking to leave this cue ball tight to the top cushion. Just restricts what Mark Williams can do. Yeah, it's all part and parcel of the game, John, isn't it? You're going to get some of these when you play them. Mm. But it's just that you just know that they're just bitty, horrible frames until someone gets a chance. And whoever gets that chance, invariably, it would be a very good one. I was wondering whether he might be tempted by the double now, if he can get the cue ball back to a safe place, but not even the thought of it. Just content to find his top cushion. Tighter the better. Well, this time he's trying to get a snooker behind the black, but that wasn't one of his best. that 
Mark can get to the bottom of the cue ball. It could give him the advantage. Very, very few players on the circuit who can go toe to toe in the tactical department with John Higgins. But Mark Williams is definitely one of them. He almost gives off the aura of not being capable of doing it, John, because of the way he plays, doesn't he? But you play Mark Williams and you are in some horrible spots on the snooker table. He knows where to stick the cue ball. Very clever. Yeah, that was a clever shot. Purposely playing that red from into the face of the brown to keep it at the other end of the table. The other thing that's making the safety a little bit more difficult, the red near the far right corner, it's possible. So basically all the safety has to be in the left half of the table as we look. You couldn't play safe in the right half, you could leave a cut. And it's also stopping somebody having to go at a double for the exactly yeah, the same yeah. reason. Absolutely. There's a couple of times I thought, oh, John might play the double here, but then I noticed that red over the corner. And Unless you get the cue ball on the right-hand side of the table, but then you may leave a pot to that far corner. But these reds gradually beginning to open up. Excellent cue ball. Oh, that's better. Tighter you can get that white to the top cushion. Least amount of shots your opponent can play and reply. Can't get the cue up in the air and jack down. And play a shot where he brings it. I mean, see Mark's face there, little nod, appreciation. Definitely got the upper hand here, John Higgins. Was he taking this on? He did. He did. And he couldn't have got much closer. Oh, it nearly dropped. A bit slower. Gravity may have pulled it in. Anyway, John Higgins gets the first good chance. One. Yeah, just had the natural angle to come on the black. Mm. Nice shot that from John. And it really is fascinating at the start of these frames watching these two players. They use that expression, don't we? Chess with balls. And I certainly like that with these two. And one's got a manoeuvre, the other one usually has an answer. But it was John Higgins' Eight. excellent cue ball. Tight on the top cushion that stopped Mark Williams from getting the cue ball back. And he was forced into that pot in the middle. So advantage Higgins there. Nice. Nine. Play for the brown in the middle, but he's overscrewed it. He wanted to be straightish on this brown. He's got a little bit of work to do now with the cue ball. May have to risk some kind of cannon here, coming round off two cushions. Well, he thinks he can. He could hold it off one, and I'll tell you what, he couldn't have played that any better. He couldn't have played that any better. Thirty. Look at the way the cue ball arc with the backspin he had on it. 
That was a very good shot. And even better, John, the angle he finished on the Fox. red, isn't it? Just to run through. Because the blue's pretty tricky with that red next to it. Maybe not pot at all. So he had to get position on the black there. Yeah, I don't think he has to play a cannon here. There's a little cluster of three, and I think the one that's sort of low will go to the same pocket as the black. That's the one he's played on. Needs a bounce. Doesn't want to be hampered by the red near the cushion. Yeah, and back to the, the question on the blue now. Can he run through this and get for the black? Probably. Because if he can't, that's the shot he'll play. And he could. 22. Yeah, and not only did he nudge the reds, he's opened them up. He's now got a 14-point lead. Wouldn't say the frames at his mercy, because we're playing in the final of the World Championship. But it's a great chance... 29. There you go, just looking for another 41 points from this position. When he clears the reds at this end that are in the open, he's still got that one over the far right corner. Played the little cannon perfectly. Just what you'd expect from someone 37. who's been four times champion of the world. Great response. And a fascinating frame right at the start of this with all that tactical play. And he's getting his just reward. And very importantly in this break, he's managed to stay on the black right the way through it. Doesn't to get involved going up the table towards the blue, which is slightly hampered by that loose red. 46. This is excellent. Yeah, and I picked on it, or picked up on it in the last frame. Just signs now he's getting through the ball better. He was a bit nervy at the start of this session, but he's gone through that barrier and now queuing a lot better. Forty-five points the lead. I mean, in an ideal world, he'd like to have an angle on this red and go up the table for the pink. Well, he's decided to play 54. for the black as long as he's not straight. It's easy to forget as well, John, in these long matches, isn't it? The fact that he was actually 4 0 down in this 61. match as well, so pulling back to 6 5. Who would you like it? Oh, he's been under it from, day, uh, from the start of the match, hasn't he? 4 0, 5 1. 62. So he pots the pink. And he'll go 60 points in front with 67 remaining. So just one red required after the pink. That confirms it. This red and Mark Williams will need a 68. snooker. Sixty-nine. It's been truly excellent from John Higgins this break. Lovely cue ball control. Perfect position around the black spot. And even though he slightly overhit that one, he won't be on the red next to the blue, I don't think. Or is he? 72. 
Now a little swerve required. No problem. 73. Yes, and that'll keep Mark Williams in his seat. And for any aspiring snooker players, you watch on John Higgins. He went through a rough spell at the start of this match. 78. Went in a, through a rough spell in the first couple of frames, even though, even though he managed to win one. Just believing that he hung on in there, he starts to cue better. And he certainly is. Chances of making a century. It would be very difficult with the two reds on either side of the table, but he does like a double. And that's what he's going to play here. 85. He does like a double. 86. <laughs> That's the lovely thing when you're in the Crucible Theatre. When someone rolls a ball, you don't 92. know it's in until it drops. He's already had eight centuries in the tournament. And there have been 79. So could this be the 80th? It's the record of 86. Going to be beaten this year. Well played, <laughs> wonderful. Turn up. And the Higgins family, well pleased with that. And you can be a lot of things in this game, John. You can be a great pot of rate builder, but you need a big heart and battling qualities, which John Higgins has shown here. Yep, you need a lot of ingredients in the recipe of being a top-class snooker player, John. And he's got all the ingredients. Every one of them. Hundred and nine. Hundred and forty. Well, we said when they were tip-tapping about, it's a frame that no professional life, because when you get the first chance, and invariably the balls are there for the taking, but you've got to take them, and you can't take them much better than that. The Higgins family over the moon, as will John Higgins. He's still one behind, but now beginning to cue well. Mark Williams leads, 6-5. Championships so far. Uh, we're chasing 86 as the record year in 2015 and 2016. And if we're to do that, there's already been two centuries in this final made by John. Uh, the top in any match here has been eight. We're going to have to beat that in order to break the record this year. Can be done, of course, and he's certainly gone about it the right way. And it was all Ken and Steve because of this miss, the foundation of it from Mark yeah, they were sort of they were sort of fiddling around trying to get the cue ball back. And eventually John got Mark Williams in a very difficult situation. And Mark, as he normally does, tries to pot himself out of, uh, out of the situation here. And he goes for this red into the centre pocket. And just how, look how close it is. Just went into the pocket and out of it. But if you look at the position of the balls there, Hazel, actually, John Higgins cleared the table from that position. <laughs> it was an incredible break, and uh, it sort of got him well, into the that group. position, actually, yeah. From that position, actually, the only ball that he, he was leaving was the one he missed. So he's yeah, a clever yeah. opportunist player as well. But, um, you know, like somewhere down the line, you have to take a risk. And Mark was the one that did, and John Higgins capitalised. This is the last before their interval. Just a bit pacey on the break-off shot there. But I think the yellow may have come to the rescue for the reds on the left-hand side of the table.
and we always say that the World Championship is a marathon. This is Mark Williams' 100th frame of the championship so far. On the other hand, John Higgins has had 98. Not a lot of difference. Should be warmed up by now then. Just a couple of these cutback blacks. He's taking this one on. There's a couple of reds there, so he didn't. If he pots the black, you think he's bound to be on one of them. Played it well. If you get a bit of luck, take advantage of it, because it could always go the other way. Eight. Nine. John, I had absolutely no doubt he was knocking that block in. Honestly, I've seen him play thousands of frames over the years, and there's never been anyone who's more adept at potting those awkward, horrible shots that nobody likes. He's just brilliant at them. Here's the fluke, which obviously it was. He landed the safety, but the black after it. And there's John Higgins, not too impressed by it. But the black afterwards was horrible. Twelve. But He's brilliant at them. Now, to play the cannon, because the pink is slightly separated from the cluster, you have to hit the pink absolutely plumb full in the face to get that pink to run into the reds. There's one loose red, but you might not get a better chance than this. Got to hit that pink full. No, he didn't, and that's why he's gone in the corner. Mark Williams, 12. Mm. John Higgins, 6. Needed to hit the pink full. OK, don't get me wrong, it's a little unlucky for the pink to go in. Look at it again. See, he just caught it half ball on the left-hand side as we look. Unlucky to see the pink go in, though. Seem to be coming to the boil now. Well, will we play the same shot, do you think, John? He's looking at it once again because the pink's slightly separated. But he can play it slightly differently. He can play it a bit gentler and play half ball on the pink. And the red just left of the pink. He'd still be on one to the corner. But does he go all out full blooded? Looks like it. That was the advantage of having that red just to the left of the pink. There was always a chance you could have developed that. Six. Well, he's on this red. It's finished on the left-hand side cushion, but it, it's mighty thin. You say, John, it was mighty John thin, Higgins, and it's a delicate shot. Settle down, please. Thank you. The way John Higgins' his face looked, he just caught that jaw, didn't it? Mark what? could get through to it. He's got a nice angle on the black here. Mm, how well did he play that? Never easy when they're in the jaws to get perfect position, but that was superb. Well, under normal circumstances, you say, maybe he's a little bit unlucky there. They stuck Eight. on him, but the red he's got to the left corner. We may be able to get one to the right middle. The right corner 
Oh, well, the one to the right middle shouldn't cause him a problem. The one to the left Nine. corner where he was hampered, could have just dropped it in, maybe finished on the pink, but he'll be happy with the lay of the land now. Forty. Fifty. Yeah, that's twice now. And the referee Brennan Moore has just said, just give me a second, because there's some noise coming from backstage. Don't know where from. It'd have to be something in your field to put Mark Williams off, wouldn't you? Anyway, 22. Found the gap nicely, perfect on this red. 23. And if none of those reds go, that little cluster of five would play a cannon, but I don't see the value in doing it now. It could go wrong. I'll be thinking of it pretty soon. As I say, unless one of them goes where you can play on it in a certain way. 29. That you could pot a red and bring the others into play. This black to go 36 points in front. Still 75 remaining. 29. Played the cannon that time. <laughs> well... It's all right, but that cue ball being close to the side cushion doesn't make this red to the middle any easier. Excellent again. 37. Okay. He's lost the cue ball, and that was a tricky enough pot. And where the reds are, Stuck behind the brown. Good luck with this one, John. Paul Williams, 37. If he hits one here and gets this safe, he'll be over the moon. Yeah, normally with this, if you can hit one cushion, you play hit and hope. I think you'll have to play the hit and hope. Foul, I miss. Mark Williams, seven. Here's a question now for Mark. Although he'll take this red on a potter of his stature. He's not going to have these replaced. And this is a chance to win the frame now. 1. Yeah, no value in sticking him back there, was there, John? Because, you know, John Higgins may fluke one, so... If you've got a chance like that, take it. Could have finished better on this pink, in all honesty. But played that well, using the rest. And this red, just this red, putting 52 points in front, with just 51 remaining. And he'll restore his two-frame advantage Seven. going into the mid-session interval. And he's on the blue. Eight. Just. And he knows that if he makes certain of the colour, then John Higgins won't come back. But at the moment, just one snooker needed. Mark will be well aware of how good John Higgins can be at playing snooker. So make certain of the blue. And he did. And he's going to be on the red below the pink. I'll tell you what, John. These two are serving up some 30. final, aren't they? They are. And uh, 
as we saw at the start of this frame, that little run of the ball is going to make all the difference. But you feel in some of the frames. That was an outrageous fluke 40. that Mark got. But as I say, you've got to take advantage of them. Give him the platform to, to win this frame. Just have a look at the scoreboard. Pots the pink. There'd be no way that John Higgins will come back to the table. Yeah, it looked like we're going to have one of those frames again, just tip tapping into the reds, and then from nowhere 20. he fluked the red, got 37. Okay, didn't win the frame, but when he ran out of position, he just played the snooker behind the brown, and that oh, caused a mistake from John Higgins. So John Higgins marches off to the dressing room. Mark Williams will be relieved in a way. He's still got his two frame advantage. This time it's 7 5. What we would expect from two greats of the game, Ken. Yeah, it is. It's to and fro, and, and it is great. It's great to watch. You know, it's it's nail biting stuff as well, and it, you can feel this sort of enthusiasm with the crowd. They're engrossed in it. We're certainly engrossed in it here, and uh, it's great to see two great champions going at it, like two boxers in a ring. It's fantastic. They sure are. And we've had two centuries from John Higgins. Looked like he was finally getting in stroke there, but another uh, good effort from from Williams there. Yeah, I mean, uh, John Higgins sort of like was a bit awkward on the red. He, he got into the pack, uh, and uh, the red with the rest was very tricky and difficult. Mark Williams had uh, tried to go into the pack, messed his chance up. John Higgins could have hoped for a better leave than this, to be quite honest, uh, but he would have been distraught to see it stay over the pocket. And um, no, Mark Williams didn't completely uh, win the frame there and then, but uh, he did enough, you know. He did enough, yeah. Now, one thing we were talking about in the studio here was the long pot success, which is quite interesting because uh, John's taken on, what, eight in this match, and he's got a 38% success rate with that. He's 65 throughout the whole tournament. Significantly, though, Williams, 17 out of 25, 68% for you. Now, is that as a result of the new coaching system that he's been working on with sight -run? and the extra work that he's done with these? Uh, definitely. I, I think uh, the fact that he started taking a lot more on will tell, tell you one thing, that he's a lot more confident. He's got a higher percentage. If you maybe uh, go back maybe a year ago, his percentage, and when he wasn't playing so well, or even a few years ago before he started using Stephen Feeney, uh, he seems to be hitting more at the middle of the white, which means he's got more consistency of the cue ball, more, more confidence in the longer pots, and obviously more success even in the safety department. And the most important, the hardest thing to do in snooker is to hit the middle of the white. Mm. Normally when you're not playing well, you're imparting too much side, so you're not getting consistency, where he's getting a lot more consistency on those long pots and a lot more confident on them. But if his long potting's come back as it has, surely he's, he's bound to score better overall. Yeah, I mean, if you're, if you're putting the long ones, then also you're more accurate amongst the balls. And I think that's shown. You know, he, he looks very confident amongst the balls and um, striking them with authority. Uh, even though he still only sort of floats shots in a lot of the time, he just rolls the balls towards pockets more so than lots of other top players. But he's been playing some great shots. He, when he's been going into the pack, though, he hasn't really been splitting the packs open mm. very yeah, well. Yeah, yeah. So that's why he hasn't really been winning that many frames in one visit. And, you know, and there's a little bit of luck attached to that, but there's also an art form attached to it. So perhaps you know, it's not perhaps his strongest point, but, or it just may be on the day. But he's potted a lot of blacks where the white balls had to go into the cushion first, and then it has to go back to the pack. And they're a lot harder to guarantee the split. OK. Um, overall, though, a really interesting momentum shift. Obviously, Williams had the upper hand, 5-1 up. But John's come back him now and we proper we have a proper match on here guys yeah yeah, yeah it feels like john's now got his, his teeth into this match and uh, yeah he's a bulldog uh, when he gets going so he's he's not yeah, he's not on parity but i think he's got his, his teeth into mark's leg but <laughs> okay. they, like shoveling him off nice, it. nice. fascinating to see how that works <laughs> nice imagery there thanks very much Steve. touched he was to see some of those films and make him appreciate how the players and indeed this sport really connects with people. So you've met some of our super fans now back to our superstars. We've got another five frames to play in this best of 35 frames final tonight. Who will have the overnight lead and Thank by you. what margin? Down, back to John and John. Frame 13. Mark Williams. Thank you, Hazel. Yeah, Crucible family. Down now, please. And we very much appreciate their support and dedication to the game that we love. Absolutely, John. Been a love affair myself with this place ever since I was a 13-year-old boy. 
came through the doors for well just nearly 14 actually in 1977 to watch the first time when the championship was here and it was electric then and it still is now no venue like it just saw the average frame time just under 17 and a half minutes both these players get on with it every short time it's not slow just got to judge this well though seen a few of these come off a bit square and catch the pink It's in that red full, made certain it was safe. Touching ball, is it referee? He's having a close look, is Brendan Moore. It's touching that one, Mark. It is touching, so that gives Mark an easy path back to the ball end. Now, sometimes you can play just to make certain you get tight to the cushion, or is he going to come off the ball cushion and try and get in behind the yellow? In behind the yellow, he's trying. Not quite. <coughs> Not left a pot on, but uh, I think John can get through to this red to play the containing safety. Just while we've got a few safety shots on, John, just ask you, pardon my ignorance, did you play in the 77 championship here? I did. I lost uh, to John Spencer, the, uh, the eventual winner. Were you a big fan of the venue straight away, were you? Well, the first thing that was a real shock to us was uh, starting playing at 10.30 in the morning. Snooker players didn't get up till well, at that time normally. And I bet both these players, when they play morning sessions, are walking around the streets of Sheffield from about 8 onwards. I bet you were. Yeah, well, I actually started practising before I came to Sheffield. I, I'd, at home, I had a table at home looking to have one. I'd be up at 8 o'clock in the morning practicing in preparation just basically because I knew you were going to have 10 o'clock sessions you might as well get used to them yeah but as I say originally it was 10 30 then it went to 10 o'clock and I'm amazed at the standard that's produced in those morning sessions but no morning sessions in the final the afternoon and evening and what a match up two of that great class of 92 here. Couldn't do anything else but just play the containing safety. And with that red in the balk end, well, you could play safe in the balk end as long as you cover that red with the yellow. Or is it too risky? John thought so. It's a funny thing watching the expressions on these two that they've got total appreciation for the shots each other plays. You know, play a shot and John Higgins will come up and look at the situation. Some good shot, pal. That was clever. And Mark Williams likewise. And covering that red in the ball end with the yellow. Puts a little bit of pressure now on the shot for John. There you see, just covered it. He knocked a red towards the corner. And kissing the green. Not the best of safeties. Can't get to the one near the left corner pocket, and I presume the fact he's looking down here, the green is covering the red near the bot line, so John was a little bit fortunate there. Yeah, he's been down to have a look as well. If he drops onto the red that's near the top cushion off the side cushion, he'd be would he be leaving anything, but he's decided to come off the pack instead. Well, he could play the top two reds, so no damage done there. And it looks like a pretty good cue ball. Covered everything. Although I'm saying that, is there a gap between yellow and brown?
double maybe is he thinking of? Well, there is a gap, but he can only hit the red full ball. Can he force an angle to screw back to the ball cushion? Never thought about the screw that went for the double. But that's why we always say why professionals don't like doubles. If it doesn't go in, depending on what part of the jaw of the middle pocket it hits, and you're never certain, it was close, but he's left it. Just making certain here, there's quite a few reds he can play on. The black obviously goes to the right corner, so he'd like to be on the black as soon as he possibly could. There's the best angle from the green. It's all about line and length. And we just want to kiss these reds. Mm, that spoilt it somewhat. Four. Well, he's got a straight red to this corner, but as I say, I don't think the black goes into the opposite corner pocket. Can he make an angle to run round of two cushions for the pink? He's going to have to pinch a bit if he does. Mm, tried to pinch too much. Mar Williams, four. <coughs> can't try and pinch any of these pockets. I know we've all said they're playing generous, but not that generous. Yeah, and in fairness to them, I do think in the last couple of sessions they've tightened up a little bit. I think it's when the cloth is absolutely brand new, they've been sliding in a little bit too easily. There's been one or two that haven't gone in, that had earlier, so a little bit more of a test. But John will be disappointed with the safety at the moment from himself. Players hate it when they hit ball colours, but particularly when you're going down the table, there's no real reason for that. Well, it has to be said that his long potting's just not quite on it tonight. Gimme, skinny. Shot for control. One. Doesn't have to go into the pack here. Could do so if he wants, but doesn't have to. There's a, a red on the left hand side at the bottom of the cluster. Yeah, does he fancy playing the precise positional shot? Answer was no, he didn't, so he trusts a little bit to luck, but he'll be happy with that. It's worked out absolutely perfect. Six. Yeah, lovely little cannon, that. And of course, once he drops this red in, an excellent chance for Seven. John Higgins. Yes, and I think it's only the red that's closest to the left corner that's stopping the black going in both corner pockets, so if that's the case... That's the red he'll play for, off the black. Doesn't have to play any cannons to get over the winning line now. Red's nice in the open, and I think the black will be available into both corners. You can clearly see it will be after that red's potted. 50. Great chance. He's 
Just wants a little stun up into the red above the black. That's the fella, but he flicked the other one first. Just caught that first red. Wanted to miss that at the second one up. And because he got that flick, slightly lost the cue ball. But it shouldn't be a problem. An untimely sneeze. So, being the consummate professional, John gets up and gets back behind the line of the shot. Needs full concentration on this chance. Twenty-three. But once again, just lost the cue ball slightly. Yeah, ever since that. A couple of shots ago, that little cannon that he flicked the other one. It's just been slightly awry with the cue ball control. And he still is. Trying to play the screw with check side and come back up the table for this red. Yes, he can still pot it. But he's not ideal, and the cue ball's running away. <laughs> just Johnny seemed to be an accumulation 29. of pressure there. That's all it was. He just, once he didn't get that cannon. And he flicked the other red, he was out of position for the next one, then off to pink, and it basically just caught up with him that break. There's the red he missed, and he'll be very disappointed not to have made more there. That was a very good chance. Overhit that slightly. Now, can John get past the blue? Well, he can, I think. Referee Brendan Moore just having a look as well. If he can get through to it, then he'll take it on. Because he knows if he knocks it in, it could be a frame winner. And could well be now. Wonderful shot. One. Nice, yeah, just excellent queuing. Straight through the ball. play the cannon there, just flip the other red out and he looks like he's perfect on the red on the left Eight. little stun up and you could not ask for these to be in better positions well there's 33 points from this position required nine but take nothing for granted Sixty. Seventy. So you feel if you can screw back for one of these two reds just below the pink. And get on one of them nicely without being hampered, and that's absolutely perfect. Twenty-four. After this black, he's looking for red, cover, red. To leave Mark Williams needing a snooker. When he pots 
past this red, 32. there'll be 67 remaining. So as I say, red cover, red needed. 33. He didn't come actually uh, absolutely perfect here. And to hold for the, the, the red he needs, he's going to have to play a cannon on the pink. And you play, you don't hit these too hard. Give time for the backspin to take effect. And got it. <laughs> And this red Fault. now to go 66 points in front with just 59 remaining. Lucky to get the second chance probably, John, but great opening red. Deserves to win the frame from it. As you say, we've seen one or two shots, long shots from Mark Williams haven't quite gone in this evening. But there was no problem with John Higgins' long game there. That was an excellent shot. You can't hit it better than this. 48. Forty-nine. Well, if he's screwing up and down the table, he's got to miss the yellow. Oh, he checked it. He's checked it. Is he going to knock these reds on? What a great effort! He played it with a ton of left-hand side, like an exhibition shot. But it won't make any difference. Mark Williams won't oh, bother getting out of his seat. The train was well and truly over. And John Higgins once again reduces his deficit to just one frame. And it's still four to play in this session. 7 6, Mark Williams. Higgins is right on his tail again. And the foundation of that break was that fantastic red that we saw. Yeah. yeah, I mean, Mark Williams had played a, a loose safety shot uh, and gave him a sniff. Um, and whilst, whilst you expect at this level and this, this juncture of the tournament that players are in stroke, you've still got to knock those in. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and it was a beautiful shot you played. Uh, perhaps a guide with the blue a little yeah, bit. Yeah, see how close the cue ball actually got to the blue there. He was almost had to flick a little bit of right hand side just to, but the, the, the blue was actually a good guide as he's down on the shot for, in his eye line, but cued it in beautifully and again, you know, made a frame and a break from it. Impressions of the way Higgins appears to be warming up a little now. Well, he's still not happy that he's not clinching no. mm -hmm. the frames in one, one visit, as we now be, it's become you know, the de rigueur for, for the, the, the top players to be able to do. So he's, he's letting Mark back in. Uh, so it's, I think it's just who can actually grab this game by the scruff of the neck at the moment. It may not happen in this session, but somewhere down the line, somebody might take Thank off. Thank you, frame 14. Uh, it might not happen, but John Higgins uh, to break. anybody that can is going to have a great advantage. Can he get back on terms here? Yeah, this final at the moment, John, is being played out like the two semi-finals. Usually have a session in a match where someone runs away with it and maybe wins 6-2 or something like that. We've not seen that in either of the semi-finals. Mark Williams looked as though he could have done that in the early stages of this match, but was able to push on that advantage. Yeah, I think in this case, I think with this, these two together, I think they're just too clever. I think they're too clever for, even when they start losing a few frames, you know, to scrap the way in and win another one and stop. You, know, you don't see them losing five or six frames on the spin because they're just too good at match play. I think that's simply it in a nutshell. Now, Mark Williams will be tempted by this red in the middle, I'm pretty sure. Far from easy, but Ken mentioned before in the studio, he's one of the best players he's seen, I think, in the middle pocket. Doesn't lessen the pressure, though, if he does decide to go for the middle. He could play it to the far left corner and maybe feel as though he wouldn't leave anything too easy, but if he plays it in the middle and misses it, he's going to leave a sitter for his opponent. You know, I think one of the reasons why he's a little reticent, John, with the blue being knocked off its spot a touch, I think if the blue was there, he, he, he'd probably feel as if just playing this natural weight would take it up towards the blue. I think would have been slightly off its spot. He's got to hit it a bit firmer. 
Unbelievable shit. And he obviously thinks the pins were popped. But that was a brave shot to play. Look what he was leaving. And the pink does go. Yeah, that's ultimately why I think he chose the shot. I think if he was having to play up with any pace more than that, higher up the table, he wouldn't have taken that. But because the pink did go, he decided to go. Oh, what a great shot. Seven. Pink spot not available. Goes upon the blue spot. That won't bother Mark at the moment. Eight. A little bit straight, but I think he's just got a, enough angle to be able to nicely come on one of those reds in the other half of the table. <coughs> yeah, a little trace of the left hand side. Now, there is a red at the bottom of the cluster that will go, and the reason I mention 40. that. Some players, rather than go into the pack and play the cannon, 50. would rather play on the red that's loose, just leave himself a half-ball pot, and in potting that, bring other reds into play. We'll see how he wants to play it. Straight into him. Oh, oh, well, would you believe it? Oh, okay, he catch it full in the face. John Higgins, but six. once again, when he's gone into him, previous frame... He knocked the pink in when he didn't catch it, and this time, not catching them full, down, he's please. Thank off. You. I don't question the choice of shot, but he had an alternative to play, but that is unlucky. <clears throat> Obviously no problem with being able to pot this red that's there. John's just having a look to see if he can pot it. That's why, and avoid the cannon on the, any of the reds as he comes down the table. Can't really screw this red in, so it's just, well, he may be able to get something out of it. He's just, I wonder if he can screw past the other side and get a gap, which is what he's done, although he didn't get the gap. And now, One. well, he stuck a red over the corner. He may be forced into this black, John. Yeah, and if that red had just been slightly away from the cushion, it would have made this pocket feel a lot bigger, but it's not. So there's a lot of pressure on this shot, tight under the cushion. Absolutely brilliant. As John rightly said, that red Eight. wasn't close enough to the pocket to make it a big hole. So there was plenty of pressure on that one. And just looking at John's body language, he's obviously had to give 100% concentration to potting the black, but he's not landed good on the red. Just a puff of the cheeks told me that he's left with another slightly difficult shot. Yep. Going across the table, slightly hitting down. Very easy to flick a bit of side on these. Need good cueing. Nine. Well, it was good cueing. Now, if John had a good look at this before, it must be pretty tight, because he didn't just get down straight away. I mean, from our angle, it looks like it flies in, but... Where John is, it might be a touch tighter, looking at it. Played it really well. It's one of those, if you're straight behind it and you've got the view of the object ball and the cue ball and the pocket 50. in line, you'd never miss it. But as John said, it was tricky. Now, what a chance. 60. To draw level and after being 4 0 down, 5 1 behind, this would be some achievement from John Higgins. Hmm. Is he on this red to the corner? 23. Mm, it's pretty tight. 
so maybe not. Might be change of plan. Obviously, you can pot this one that's close to the left corner pockets, but a little bit of work to do with the cue ball. Twenty-four. Well, it was nice to get through the gap, but he knew he was going to be slightly hampered with the next shot. Just had to stand for it. Yeah, this is tough. And all you can do in this situation, you can't try to do much with the cue ball. Just pot the pink and just trust to look you get the right cannon. It's flicked in off the red. He's OK. But a horrible split second, he thought he'd missed that. 30. Such was the wafer-thin contact. 31. Flicked the pink in the pocket. <coughs> and these are lovely now. Yes, and that red near the left corner is a lot easier than it was when it was tight against the cushion. Thirty-eight. Another 39. twenty-four points needed in this situation. So basically, we're looking at this black, two more reds, and he'll have levelled the match. He has made a stern stuff as John Higgins. I've been 46. saying it for years and years and years, both playing him and being in the commentary box and in the studio. Match after match, he just seems 47. to find it from somewhere. Brilliant competitor. 50. to play for that red, which as I say was difficult before, but when he potted the ping and it flicked it away from 54. the cushion, it may give him a nice angle for it. Red, colour red needed. red to go 54 points in front 62. with just 51 remaining 63 well, Mark Williams He's disappointed, I think, particularly with his long game today. And okay, a couple of times he may feel he was unlucky when he went into the cluster. And this, on this occasion, he went in off. Another occasion, he knocked the pink in. Right, going right back to the start of this break, John. What a black that was from John Higgins from the jaws of the pocket. Seventy-five. Absolutely wonderful cutback. Lots of pressure on it. 76. Floated in the hole. And everything he got he deserves after that shot. And he's got his shooting boots on, John. I mentioned earlier, he need to just step it up a touch. Well, he certainly has been doing. And this has been mightily impressive. Yeah, and it'll be interesting to see what the response is from Mark 82. Williams here. We've said that he's long potting just slightly off. How will he respond? Because John Higgins at the moment has got eyes only for another century. Mark Williams has made ten centuries in the tournament. If John Higgins can make one here, then he'll equal that. 83. And it'll be the 81st of the tournament. 'Cause course, it's John Higgins who holds the record for century breaks made in the World Championship, 14. 90.
And the thing is about him, John, 92. once he gets on this roll, he can reel off big breaks one after the other, no problem. Ninety five. Ninety nine. Just this blue for another fabulous century. Well played, John. One hundred and four. Absolutely wonderful. He's really starting to hit it good now, that's for sure. It's there, absolutely wonderful from John Higgins. Another century, break of 117. 117 in the frame. And at last, John he's Higgins. clawed it back. It's 7 all. During a shot, we know all about that, but it's important also to to have discipline after a shot. There's a, there's a bit of footage from a couple of frames ago in frame 13. This is marked with the tricky red. He sort of is up, he's up too early. He doesn't finish his shot properly, as you see. Then he leaves John Higgins this long red. Watch the difference here. John doesn't move until the white stopped and the red, and then he's up chasing. It, it just, you got a sense of how confident he was when he was playing it. As I said, here's the shot that Mark had. I mean, it's a tough shot, but you've got to tell yourself, stay down on it as long as you can. There's an after, uh, there's something that goes on after the shot that's really important, and John's taking that into frame 14. He's really starting to look hot, isn't he? He sure is, Alan, and Alan loving the fact that he's got three tables to himself down there, <laughs> doesn't he? Just love it. We talked about Higgins warming up, that's his third century, and from William's point of view, a top break of 72 in this session. Yeah, I think, you know, just John is, is a, as I say, is just, will always try his hardest and uh, he seems to be coming good. That's a nice frame to win in one visit. I keep on mentioning this, but it does become important to get a roll on. And now, you know, you'd, you'd say, well, he's going to be better placed for the, the next three frames. Yeah, absolutely. He looks, uh, you know, he's, he's starting to motor a bit more. His tempo has picked up. Uh, and he's starting to strike the ball with a little bit more authority. And Mark Williams needs to sort of break that rhythm a little bit. You saw him look down when he was in his Spring chair. 15. He knows that he's up Mark against Williams. it now and John is on a roll. He's got to find something himself to try and uh, break that rhythm and stop the rot. So seven frames apiece, ten centuries apiece in this championship. It couldn't be more, even Stevens, if it tried. Yes, you could certainly say, Hazel, that the cream is rising to the top here. But I agree with Ken. Mark Williams has got to find something now. I know one thing, John. Alan McManus has given us all a bad name when he's doing them demos. He never misses. I know. <laughs> oh, I said uh, in the last frame that John Higgins held the record, but... Well, I should have known that the king of the crucible, Stephen Hendry, had 16. Sorry, Stephen. I'm glad you corrected that, John. He'd be throwing things at the TV. Oh, well. <laughs> Mark Williams looked over to John Higgins there, apologised, but... Apologise or not, he's Mark Williams won. taking the opportunity to play the snooker and he's purposely covered the right-hand side of the table as we look. He was playing this red past the green. It's all wrong. Quarter ball off the green is in the pocket. Now, the reason he's cut down the... That was John's look and expression. If he comes down the right-hand side of the table, he could get it safe. So he's having to come off two cushions here you can always misjudge the slide off the second cushion. This isn't a certainty to get it safe. Always slide off the second cushion. Not hard Foul enough. Miss. Mar Williams for. But that line, a bit harder, he'd have left something. Yeah, 
You see how it slides off that set? Oh, well, he just had the right weight not to leave anything. I'm looking at Mark Williams and he's had an intake of breath there. He thought he was certain to be on something. It's a funny thing. I think the, the, the main thing that where the game has changed, the players, because of the long potting of the players, they don't like playing thick, aggressive safeties. And John Higgins would rather play this risky red than, than do that. I think it's the only red he could leave is the one he's playing if he goes for the pot. And he did go for the pot, but missed it by such a way, he'll be lucky if he's not left anything. Yeah, that's... Uh... Well, as far away as he's been with any pot in this session. And, of course, he's left Mark Williams with a straight red. It's a funny thing, John, as well, isn't it? The well, psychology of this game, you, you're playing catch-up in a match and you get all of a sudden you get level. And then it's as if your concentration drops for the next couple of shots. I mean, that wasn't an easy shot by a long stretch, but it's almost saying, oh, you, you say to yourself, oh, my first objective is get level. And then your concentration can go... And all of a sudden, you're behind again. Eight. Mm, this is a chance now for Mark to bring other Reds into play. And he's played it nicely. Nine. Well, we asked the question. He's got him up a gear. Here's his chance. Twenty-two. Twenty-three. A little bit low on the black, but I don't think you'll be playing a cannon here. There's a couple of loose, loose reds to play on. Thirty. I'm just looking at the cluster. Thirty-one. There may be a red just below and to the right of the pink that goes to the left corner, although having a second look, I don't think it does. So two loose reds to play for. Needs a good line and length here. Playing for the one near the top cushion, and this looks good. Lovely line. You're not straight. Looks perfect. 35. Yeah, excellent shot, but definitely the right red to play for. Type of shot you could be very 36. positive with off the brown then, and you knew virtually guaranteeing position by hitting it firm. But nicely struck all the same. Yeah, nice angle on the black. He'll go into him here. He wants to catch the left-hand side of him because he's got that loose red on the left of the table. He could be on. Look at Mark's face. That tells us whether he's on an easy red to keep this break going or a difficult one. He's not had much luck when he's gone into the pack not at this all. evening. No, and I think the pink is a problem there, John. And the pink's blocking the easy red he'd have, the one up to the right. So that doesn't go. So he has got a, a red into the green pocket. And maybe he can cut that one in the middle as well. So it's just his choice of how he wants to play. That's the red. He's walking, he's walking. 44. He's perfect on the blue. Well, 
Well, last frame we just said how brilliant John Higgins was. 49. That break of 117. So far in this break, this is class. And it's the ability 50. when you've been fr frozen out or haven't seen a lot of great chances or maybe missed a couple that when you sense danger you can go back in and have your response and this is what this is from Mark Williams yeah he's just giving us a bit of thought he's just run a little bit too far so I don't think he can just roll the blue in if he could roll the blue in and get a full ball can on the pink that would hold the cue ball if he's got to play on and off the top cushion got to be careful Well, he could roll it in and get the cannon on the pink. Fifty-five. Fifty-six. Same problem as the last time, but after this blue, he's just looking for one more red. Can't play a cannon on the pink this time. Yeah, he's undenied about this one for a, a little while. I'm surprised that's happened. He's heard a little on the side, on the side of caution there. If he'd come up further, he could have snookered 61. himself on the red he's on now. That's what he was worried about. This red to go 67 ahead with just 59 remaining. Good response here from Mark Williams. You just felt that if he got a chance, he had to do something with it. And fair play, that's exactly what he's done. is good stuff isn't it 67 this is a great response from mark thank you it's just 68 wonderful match play snooker played at the highest level i mean we've had one frame that's gone over half an hour the rest of them have been pretty quick fire even the frames that look like they're going to all could have been resolved by good play and both players and really good stroke and playing really 75. well. Maybe an opportunity in potting this red to bring one of the two reds near the side cushion into play. 76. Well, he's not perfect on the pink, but we know he's a, a master at dropping this type of shot in. He'd love to make a century. 75. Right in the heart of the pocket. <laughs> Centuries still on. They're all level, the great ten centuries each. 82. Can Mark Williams creep ahead once more? This could be his 11th. 83. Eighty-eight. Eighty-nine. And this is what you always seem to get at this game, John, don't you? Once one player starts playing well, then the other man knows there's no other way, but you've got to respond by playing well yourself. Doesn't make it any easier, but... This has been superb from Mark Williams. Ninety-one. Ninety-three. Green and brown for the 82nd century break of this year's Betfred World Snooker Championship. Ninety-six. And it will be Mark Williams' 11th for certain now. Oh, yeah. 200. 
turn up there from Joe and Mark's son. Hundred and five. Doesn't get much better than this, JV. No, this is superb. We can all play Hundred and eleven. Sport and sometimes, you know, when you do it in practice, but to do it this way in the heat of battle when he's his opponent has thrown down the goal the front. Front. And boy, oh boy, did Mark Williams pick it up. That was absolutely superb. As we say, the one potty machine. And he knows he's back in front again. 8-7. I've been enjoying this from the practice room. Lefty, we see it here, spins round a few cushions. As the guy said in the box, it was a brilliant way to play it. But actually, it's not that difficult for a top professional. He lands nice on the, the red, but really, it looks fancy, but it's not. I'm going to play the, a similar, although I'm right-handed, but playing for, round for this red, I'm going to try and get four cushions. Try and knock this in, but there's only really one place a cue ball can finish. All right, so round it comes. For a, for a professional player, it's actually quite an easy shot. You can see they're decent on the red. Piece of cake. <laughs> oh, it's easy for you to say, but I tell you what, um, this is soundproofed obviously in here, but I suspect that Mark Williams might have been able to hear you. Pick your act up. He's yeah, going to get moving, and he uh, has. You know, he had to get moving. He had to find something, and boy, did he find something. And that was a wonderful break because there were some great shots in that break. He wasn't perfect all the way through, but he, he potted a great red up into the green pocket. Uh, then he potted a lovely long blue uh, under pressure up into the yellow pocket and just kept the break going. He had to find something, and he's found something. It's a fantastic response. I'm more interested in the fact that all of a sudden there's a new kid on the block of the demos. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Adam Manis, he's a, he demos. And, uh, Ken, you're going to have to up your game. <laughs> <laughs> I think we all are. <laughs> exactly. He's never missing, is he? Um, but in terms of back to back centuries we just had in this match, that's the fourth century. This is absolutely top quality now. It's getting, it really is warming up. There was the fear, the danger, that the two, two players had punched themselves out, that possibly they were just going to freeze a little bit in the final because of the gravity of what was they could possibly do. But I think we're now seeing their class players. Oh, yeah. The first session was a bit more nip and tuck, but now all of a sudden they're opening their shoulders out, they're going to have a slugfest, <laughs> and tomorrow's going to be brilliant. <laughs> I think it is. That was the 82nd century. Remember, we've got 86 is the record. We talked about the fact that there's only ever been eight in one match. It's happened three times, in fact, yeah, yeah. and most recently with Ronnie O'Sullivan against Barry Hawkins in that 2013 final. Do you think we've got a sniff of that? Oh, absolutely. Uh, it's well within range. And if these two guys are going to play the way they've been playing these last few games, uh, there's no reason why it can't go. I mean, it's only another five centuries to get in you know, so many frames. It's well within reach, I would feel. And what the top players like these lads can do they respond very well to the other player. Yeah. Uh, yeah. If it gets if it gets scrappy, they can scrap. But if one like sort of pots and you know makes a century, but the other guy goes, oh, I can make one of those. They, they do have a little bit about them. <laughs> Thank you. It's it's fantastic, 16. isn't it? Mark Williams has not been in a crucible final for 15 years. It's like he's never been away. John Higgins to break. Yeah, John Higgins just before he was breaking off was asking the referee how many fr frames they got to play. Well, this one and one more. And yeah, Alan McManus looked very good in the, uh, the practice table there, but potting the brown at that pace using a rest was a bit more difficult. can get through to this and if he pots it the black's available into the opposite corner this is a similar type of straight pot that John Higgins knocked in to win a frame in the opposite corner calls for good straight queuing well he decided to roll it did Mark and that double kiss will leave a pot on for a 
for John. Yeah, played it in the way. The only way he could really get in trouble was a double kiss. You see from Mark's expression, it's exactly what's happened. So, chance for John. And the way these two have been going at it for the last few frames. <laughs> this could be a very heavy contribution. It's been brilliant stuff. Yeah, it's basically, as you say, the last few frames have just been one mistake snooker. You make one mistake, you go back to your seat, and you'll be lucky to get back Six. to the table. Seven. Wonderful shot from our jib there. Coming down over the scene at the Crucible Theatre. Everyone engrossed with this match, and why not? 12. I agree with Steve. He said, that, you know, sometimes you think it's been hard getting to the final. They've had tough semi finals. Well, they'd be a little bit punched 13. out, but these two, you don't become two old warriors if you don't know what to do. And they certainly know what to do. Yeah, and also I think we've got to take into account that. Even though what they've achieved in the game, it must be a dream come true for them to be in this final and playing one another. I was talking to Jason, John Higgins, his brother, and he said he remembers the first time they played. It was 28 years ago in this 20. junior world final. That's how long they, they've been battling it out against one another. Yes, I uh, was walking around then after playing a match in that particular tournament and bumped into Ronnie, young Ronnie O'Sullivan. I said, oh, you're in the final, anything? Oh, no, he said, uh, I lost to a boy from Scotland called Higgins. He said he's pretty good. And he beat Ronnie 3-2 in the semi-final and then he beat Mark Williams 6-1 in the final. So they knew all about him fairly quickly. <laughs> and that's a player he's got on to be. He had a clever shot there. 28. Knew if he cannon that red full in the face, it would open other reds. OK, the red is on now. He may not be able to play for the black. 41 points more needed from this situation to get to snookers required. Twenty-nine. Just about got the angle on the blue, but... Just look at that, there's only one loose red to play for. When he went into them before, he only well, knocked one red out, really. Just coming around to have a look, see if there's any possibility of a plant. I mean, if he's got enough angle, he could decide to force this blue in and come round off two cushions and play a cannon, but I don't know whether he'd fancy that. And also playing for the, the red in the middle. Unless there's a red in that cluster that will go. Can't see one. Yeah, he just put his cue down on the table there. He's looking for an angle. Some, somewhat level with the black would be perfect. And then a stun up into the pack. So he's played 35. it down off the two angles. And that's a way, well, at least to guarantee you've got an angle going in. Could have done with a little bit more on the cue ball. But whatever you do with this shot, make sure you knock the black in. That's the gap he's looking for. Oh, he's missed the black. Where's the red ball going? Well, it doesn't matter. Higgins, that could be very costly for John Higgins. How many times do we see it playing with pace, thinking about the cannon? Just take your eye off the pot, only a fraction. And it looked as though it was safe until the black came and released the cue ball. I think Mark's got a, what we call a big pocket here. Can't really miss this one. Being off the other one, if it doesn't go straight in. One. And how much of a mistake will that black be from John Higgins? It's 
Just a funny shot, John. That's why I called it before he played it. I said, whatever you do, don't miss the black, because just when it's a little bit more of a cutback than you think, and you're trying to play the cannon. Seven. I've seen them missed time and time again. Yeah, at that pace that you need to break the red zone, you've got to be right in the heart of the pocket. And he wasn't. It was a fraction out. And now he's going to sit there and suffer. And this is a great chance for Mark Williams. Remember Mark's in stroke. He made a 118 break in the last frame. Eight. And of course, John, if he wins this frame, absolutely guaranteed to be in the lead coming into tomorrow's two important sessions. And he'll also, if he wins this frame, have a bite of the cherry for an even bigger lead with the last frame of the evening. Nine played in this session. Fourteen. Fifty. If it had been straight there, I'd like to have held a spot. Has he? Yes, he has. Twenty-one. Given the opportunity to play on these two reds without being hampered by the pink. If it had gone on its own spot, that is. Twenty-eight. It's funny how again can turn around. We were questioning that. Maybe Mark Williams' long potting wasn't quite on it tonight. But the two chances, this frame and the last one, he's been left right in amongst the balls. Makes a difference. Yeah. And his cue ball, when he's been in, John, has been on a sixpence. 35. It's been that good. 36. Yeah, the long pot success from both players is well below what you'd expect. 25% John Higgins, 33% from Mark Williams. 32. As I say, and we always say, if you miss when you're in, then you can 42. only expect the worst. Uh, most definitely at 43. this level, that's for sure. Well, that's not the worst kiss on the brown. He wouldn't have been playing for a cannon there. And the fact he says it virtually full ball towards the pocket is lovely. Right now, he needs a good positional shot on the colour. 47. Was able to hold 48. for the brown or green. Good shot. Fifty two. He can go up for a bark colour if he should should so wish here, because he won't need the blue. And that 53. blue being close to black, that could have been a problem, but that's not the case. 18 points of the lead, just yellow. 53. And then yellow and green, and snookers will be required. Yeah. I think we had the temerity to question whether Mark Williams was going to step it up this evening. Well, since it's gone 7 all, 57. we found out our answer, John. He's been absolutely superb. And John Higgins, when he's made the mistake, has just had to sit and suffer. And Mark's just put round and flicked 60. And flicked and balls in. And once again, a wonderful response. And there's certainly nothing wrong with his nerve. 
that's still intact, that's for sure. Yeah, 64. and I think that is the word. Nerve. From both players. As we say, it's all right doing it in the practice. It's not in, but it won't matter. Marwell 29 points in front. 18 remaining, not a concession from John Higgins. So Mark Williams now takes a two-frame advantage. One to go. lead now and, and in the, the grand scheme of the final how important is that it can work both ways obviously and you guys have experienced it both ways but for you Ken how important is it? I think it, it is when you're, you're going to bed and you know you've got the lead and you, you have to sort of the edge going into the next session uh, but as we've seen in, in the semi-finals as well I don't think it really matters for John Higgins because he's so good at coming from behind and anyway as, as is Mark Williams you know like you know when it was put up to Mark Williams tonight he's responded uh, magnificently and, and John Higgins will do the same it's just getting the little edges here mm. and there and the fractions that make such a difference I mean John Higgins missed an easy black off the spot going into the pack Mark Julie pounce and sometimes those frames can make all the difference in the long run and those are the ones that can really hurt you as well surely yeah they can uh, they're debilitating you know you get on a roll and all of a sudden you drop one of those in it's sort of back to square one it's like going up a snake yeah they're down the snake but um, uh, if you were trying to get a clue uh, as to who was going to be the favourite for the final from the semi-finals, yeah. you'd have thought the way that John Higgins closed out Karen Wilson mm -hmm. was a clue that, that John Higgins was playing better snooker because it looked like Mark Williams struggled to get over the line. It was very nervy. But you just know that every match is different. And, um, and I think Mark Williams will be the happier of the two Thank how he's coped with today. John will have a few, a few sort of worries about the fact he hasn't Williams. won every frame in, in, in one visit when he's given, been given a chance. But... Stan has been so good, and it's, it's a long day tomorrow. They've got to fight hard. They have indeed. What will be the margin of William's advantage? Let's find out. On the face of it, decent enough break-off shot. Don't think John will be taking the pot on here, just the containing safety. Well, that red that's just flicked off the cluster, it may be a tempter for Mark to cut to the right middle. <laughs> and in it goes, cue ball close the oh. corner, but it's OK, and he's got an angle on the yellow. Yeah, brilliant pot, John. Absolutely brilliant. And he's just caught the jaws and he's actually left him perfect. So, first chance to Mark Williams. He won the first session of this match by five frames three. to three. This session, it's four all. Chance to win the session as we close in on the four and a half hour. Mark for this match, but winning this session, after winning the first, he'll go in overnight with a three-frame advantage. Yeah, Mark just pointing his cue there, that gap he's looking at, he's got obviously this red, if he could stun, play for pink and come down, he'd love to get that red away from the black. Four. I don't know whether he's got the angle to do it now, but... He's gone pretty straight, so we'll be doing it off this shot. Not certain whether the pink spot is available. No, it's not. So just to remind you, when all the other spots are occupied, it goes as close to its own spot as it can in a direct line with the middle of the top cushion. I bet you it's not going to happen here, John, but I bet you'd love that pink to be able to be potted. Ten. Because that would be the one he'd play and go straight into the pack, but it's, it's not worked out that way, the way they are. So back up for blue. Half ball angle, if he can. Eleven. Yeah, he's not had much luck with this shot tonight, has he? Well, here we go. He's come a little bit closer to the cushion there. He's got to 
jack the queue up in the air. Tough way to get power in this. Yeah. Much tougher shot being near the cushion that. Yeah, as you say, striking 16. down. And of course, he'd be making certain that he didn't miss the blue. Just playing safe off the red, just to the left of the black. He doesn't want to open them up. Mark Williams, 16. It was always going to be difficult, particularly with the black only available into one corner pocket. John can get past the green, needs a telling safety here. It's a bit pacey. That's why it's come on and off the ball cushion. And there's a red on the left-hand side of the table that will tempt Mark Williams. Once again, John, though, you mentioned earlier, once he's been in amongst the balls, he's been great, but missed a couple of these this evening. I mention it like it's a gimme, but they're not, but you just, you'd expect Mark Williams, the way he's queued in this championship, to knock these in. That is the only department at the minute that's not firing on all cylinders. Everything else is great. Yeah, so it just shows you those stats we show you about long pot success in this session. And he didn't have to do anything with the cue ball. He'd have been perfect on pink or black, and he's a little bit taken aback by it. Is John Higgins playing a double here? Once again, as I say, the problem with the double, if they don't go in, you don't know where the red's going to finish. He thought he was playing as a shot for nothing. He may well have not left this red. Played the cut. Got the cut. But not a good kiss on the yellow. Tom. This was very thin. And a better kiss. You've been okay. Well, if he's playing the pot on the brown, this is a brave shot to take on. Mark Williams won. Well, here's another double that John Higgins will be playing for certain. Yeah, just coming round to have a look to see what position is going to be. Could be a stun down for the black. Don't think the pink pots from that side of the table. Very close. Yeah, he's usually very good at doubles, but they're just not finding the pocket this evening. So close. And has he left the pot for Mark? I wouldn't have thought so. He wouldn't have played the double if he had it done. No. Mark just playing the safety. Quite right, too. I mean, not only is it the correct shot, he's 9 7 up. He doesn't have to go chasing anything. John Higgins, who's under the cosh at the minute. Yeah, this is a big psychological frame, I believe, because uh, when John was trailing 4-0 and 5-1, if you'd have said, right, OK, you're going to finish the, di the first day just one frame behind, he'd have uh, been over the moon. But Mark Williams will have something to say about that.
Yes, John, and also the fact that when you've got to 7-7, seven, seven, you'd be really disappointed to be 10-7 down overnight. Yep. It's always on. John Higgins, seven. That was always a possibility. I mean, Mark's thinking, well, what's the odds of knocking the black in? But there you go. But is there anything that will tempt John Higgins? He's just looking to see if he plays this red on the right-hand side of the table. Would this red be the only one he leaves? Should he miss it? But it's a big shot to take on in a big frame. Well, he's gone for it. And he may live to regret that decision. Always a possibility with that shot. When you play it like that and it hits One. the jaws, nine times out of ten, it runs and goes across to the other corner. So, another chance for Mark Williams. Not straightforward, of course. Set. I have to open that cluster, but... He'll be trying as hard as he possibly can Eight. for that 10-7 lead overnight. Yes, and no reason not to play the cannon now. <coughs> Just played a gentle one. You'd probably be thinking maybe I should have hit it a little bit firmer because he's not really 15. developed that many reds here. But whatever he, whatever lead he builds on here. It'll be a good one. And 16. mainly because of that red tied up by the brown. John Higgins gets a chance if he comes to the table 40 or 50 behind. He certainly can't win the frame in one visit. So I'm into play for this red to the... To right middle. Just 23. looking for another 27 points from this position, but he's not a given. Twenty-four. This could be the key shot. He'll go for this full blooded. Now you need you need plenty of top spin on this to get the arc on the cue ball. First glance, it's no good. You never really know when you split reds up like that. But you could have hoped he'd been on something simpler. Forty-one, the lead. Is it time to play a safety? Take what you've got. Nine-seven up. 41 in front. Is it time for a bit of prudence from Mark Williams? Don't blame him taking his time here. Shot time's just gone over a minute. Well, what do you think he's thinking of, John? I think he was thinking originally, John, of trying to clip the red in the middle pocket and mm. come and come round and make. He ha he's come behind and he knows that if he plays it and comes round the other side of the black, he'd be leaving one in the middle that he's trying to pop that red in. 
So maybe he's decided on a double, which he has. But has he left Mark a Williams, red on the right-hand side? And if he's left that red into the middle, which he can be stunned in onto the pink, he's played a poor shot. Yeah, the way he turned in disgust when going back to his seat tells me that this red is on. But there's pressure on it because John Higgins knows, should he miss it, that will be end of frame. He can't win the frame at this visit, you wouldn't have thought, particularly with that, as I mentioned earlier, that red near the brown, but he can get right back in it if he can pot this. Big, big shot. Brilliant. It's not very often you can say it was poor shot selection, but he shouldn't have played the double there. He had a 41 point lead. Push a red safe on the cushion and wait. It's John Higgins chasing. No need to play this shot. Set. It wasn't as even he got close with the double, was it? Yeah, and we always commend him on his Eight. choice of playing a shot for nothing, but he got that one wrong. As I say, I can't see John Higgins winning the frame at this visit, but if he minds his work, he'll be right back in it. Good positional shot there. Still 30. 28 points behind. Perfectly played. 21. He'll have no thought about the red near the brown. He just looked at it actually and pulled his, pulled his face. Because it's not one of those situations where you feel as though you could hit the, the red because the, you could knock the brown in. So what I'd be doing now, 20 points behind, just close the gap and then see if you can play a good safety off that last red. Oh, I couldn't agree with you more, because it's a perfect plant, those two. 22. So it's virtually impossible to get that red out unless you hit both cushion first and into the brown. But even then, how are you going to... You have to hit 100 mile an hour to split them and get the ball into... A possible position, so there's nothing he can do. I think it's take what there, try and leave the cue ball when you're on that red on the ball cushion and just clip off it and come down and try and play a safety. Can't see anything else. Now within 13 points. 28. <laughs> 29. As I say, um, as you say, you could do it coming off the ball cushion, but it's very risky. He's got the perfect angle on the black just to roll it in and finish up on the red to the right middle. Well, he had a look a second ago, John, didn't he, to try and leave that angle off the second last red. But surely, if he gets the cannon, he is going to knock the brown in. Can't see any other result. Well, as you say, he'd have to come off the ball cushion 36. to get the cannon. He can't hit the red direct because, as you say, almost certainly the brown will go in. Just five points behind now. John Higgins, that 36. That had to happen. Mark Williams, four. Things Quiet that down, please. Thank you. In the heat of battle. Yes, two wonderful exponents of this sport. And you've seen two shots that are hard to explain. Mark Williams attempted a double. 
and John Higgins' attempt to get that out. It could only be one result for him that way. One. Ten points the lead. Still needs a good shot to get good position on the yellow. And with it being very close to cushion, needs a good angle on the yellow to get on the green. <coughs> Found a beautiful line and a wonderful length. Eight. Quick glance at the scoreboard, 17 points the lead. Still needs yellow, green and brown for a three-frame advantage overnight. Absolutely wonderful, but the shot to the yellow could not have been played any better. To leave that angle and then that yellow was a lot better than it looked. What a brilliant frame of snooker to finish the evening. It's a fabulous 30. final and this has been a fabulous final frame of it in this session. Yeah, not the icing on the cake for John Higgins, but what a marvellous nine frames we've witnessed this evening. Is that everything? Is that absolutely 17. everything? And this crucible audience are completely enthralled with it, as we are. 22. So it's Mark Williams who won the opening session, and he's going to win this session just by the odd frame. But it'll give him a three-frame advantage at the end of day one. Marvellous snooker, absolutely top draw. John Higgins will be disappointed, looked like he could get within one. But Mark Williams, when he was asked to, produced. Overnight, he leads by ten frames to seven. What a day. Four centuries, huge swings of momentum from 5-1 to 7-all uh, and two of the game's greatest. But it's Williams who takes a three-frame advantage going into day two <coughs> of this year's Betfred World Championship final. And gentlemen, what a day we have had. This is shaping up as, as truly one of the classics, Steve. Yeah, a, an astonishing uh, last frame as well, with John Higgins knocking that brown in, which looked like a sort of schoolboy error in many ways. Yeah. I think he perhaps he overhit it. If he had made it softer, he might have got a nice flick off the brown, but what do you reckon there, Ken? Yeah, I'm, I, I just thought that he was trying to hit it so hard that he might thought that the, the brown would jangle and stay over the pocket but I thought he had to hit the brown first because if he hits the red it look a dead set plan uh, and I was very surprised the way he played it but crucial frame and what a clearance from Mark Williams you know the red the black to yellow get it on nice and then the yellow to green it's been a sensational uh, session of snooker I, th I know one thing <laughs> be hard to get to sleep yeah. <laughs> replaying that yeah. shot over and over again yeah, yeah, yeah. but yeah. Uh, one thing I think today has, has sort of uh, shown me is I, I knew that John Higgins could win this final. I wasn't so sure about Mark Williams, but mm. I think this has shown uh, that I was wrong. Yeah, that Mark Williams can win this match. He looks really assured. He does indeed. And, and actually a remarkable performance considering how jaded he must have been. I mean, he was yeah. in this kebab shop at 2.30 in the morning. <laughs> Attention all Sheffield <laughs> yeah. kebab shops, by the way. He might be on his way now for more tell you what, John, John Higgins want to know what kebab shop he went to because <laughs> <laughs> he might be gone there tonight. But hats off to him, really, for yeah, that yeah, performance when he must have been shattered after that Hawkins win last yeah, night. Yeah, yeah I, I mean, the thing is, you, you know, you're not necessarily going to sleep straight away anyway, so perhaps he did the right thing. You know, and you know, How much sleep do you need? You know, perhaps you got to bed at 2 or 3 o'clock in the morning. Mm. You, know, you woke up at 11, something like that. That's OK. OK, 10-7. John Higgins was 10-7 up on Mark Selby last year and was caught. But he was 10-7 behind against Trump in 2011, the last time he won this, and won. Yeah. It can go either way, clearly. You'll know that. Yeah, I think the good thing for John Higgins, he was scoring very, very well, and he'd won a fast start tomorrow. But, I mean, it's shaping up for a magnificent uh, climax to the, to the final tomorrow. Both players in top form. And what actually happens... Okay, OK, so at the end of that session, it's a reset, right? John has put a lot of effort into that session. He's not got as much result as he wanted. It's a reset, but he starts again tomorrow. It'll be another big push. And if he, if he has to wait till the last one for a big push, he can do that. OK, we're still looking forward to two sessions tomorrow. And don't forget that that's at 2 o'clock is the first one and then at 7 o'clock. So we've got your bank holiday Monday all worked out. Put the shelf up, do the spring cleaning and the gardening in the morning and then settle <laughs> down with us from 2 o'clock. You will have earned it. But who will earn the right to call themselves the 2018 world champion? Well, I don't know, but I do know there is an awful lot of life left in this final with our over 40s. I hope you've enjoyed it. We certainly have, and we'll catch you all again tomorrow. Bye for now.